Jesus at the center of it all. Well, isn't it a wonderful time? You know, we, we I just sense such joy, and I, I, you know, it's such a pleasure to be in the in the house of our Father, and we are all together as one family. And even as what uh, Yuzon said, as we rejoice together with uh, Pastor and uh, Stephen. Uh, you know, all of our joy is also multiplied. Hallelujah. Uh, children can go to a children's church and the rest, huh? Chinese and Bahasa. Okay, today, we're going to look at Colossians 2. Alright, if you all know, uh, this next few weeks, we're going to be covering Colossians, the book of Colossians. And today, we are looking at the whole chapter of Colossians 2. Okay, it's a lot, it's 23 verses, huh? and I find that sometimes it's easier if we listen. Okay, so maybe I request all of you to close your eyes, and I will narrate. And you'll listen, huh? so close, close your eyes so that your focus is on the hearing. Colossians 2, For I would that ye knew what great conflict I have for you, and for them at Laodicea, and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God, and of the Father, and of Christ, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words, for though I be absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in the spirit, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in Him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and ye are complete in Him, which is the head of all principality and power, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Buried in, with Him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross." And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshipping of angels, intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind, and not holding the head, from which all the body by joints and bands, having nourishment, ministered and knit together, increaseth with the increase of God. Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why, as though living in the world, are ye subject to ordinances? Touch not, taste not, handle not, which all are to perish with the using, after the commandments and doctrines of men, which things have indeed a show of wisdom in will, worship, and humility, and neglecting of the body, not in any honour to the satisfying of the flesh. Father, I thank you for the reading of your word. Let it go forth today, even as I speak, from that there will be words of life coming forth to all your children here in this household, and even to me as your child. And Father, I thank you that even as we partake together of this spiritual meal, Lord, that lives will be transformed, that whatever is blocking us in our mind that we have a problem with, you will remove. 
as we understand what you have done for us in Christ Jesus. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, for being the witness about Jesus, of Jesus, and the work of Jesus in our hearts. Thank you, Father, for power today. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Uh, can I have the monitors off, please? Turn off the monitors. Okay. Today, I've entitled this sermon, Rooted and Built Up in Jesus. Because I think, as I was uh, meditating this time, uh, the, the focus of this passage is, is this, Rooted and Built Up in Jesus. Okay. It's a very, in a sense, quite a long passage. And, you know, it took me some time, you know, as, as I was meditating, you know, Lord, what is it you want to say to your children today? And um, I'm going to do something different. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to say this, so you see that speech bubble, huh? I'm actually going to say this in Malaysian English. Paraphrase it for you, okay? So you just uh, see whether you understand now, okay? So, this is Paul writing to the Colossians, huh? and he says, you know, huh? I want you to know what great conflict, you know, I'm very kanchiong, uh, in my heart for you and for those in, in uh, Laodicea. Okay, I don't know how to say that. <laughs> and for those uh, who haven't seen my face because uh, we don't have Skype and don't have WhatsApp. So I write this letter, you haven't seen my face and many people know of me but never seen me before. So I'm very concerned, you know. You know or not? I'm concerned for you guys. What am I concerned about? I'm concerned so that you all will be comforted. All right? In whatever trial that you're going through right now, that your heart will be comforted. I want you to be knit together in love as the body of Christ. Together, you're all here sitting down, growing in love with one another, learning to bear with one another because you are the body of Jesus. All right? And as you do that, you will be growing in all the riches, full assurance, full certainty of what God has done for you so that you may accurately know, uh, you will know chun chun, uh, what God has done for you. Not, not like, you know, this person said this, this person said this, but you know exactly what God has done for you and you are certain in your heart. Alright? Because, uh, in Jesus is a hidden, all sorrow, sorrow, all hidden inside Jesus, the f treasures of wisdom and knowledge. What wisdom you need? It is in Jesus. You have an issue in your life right now that you need God to solve, you need wisdom, it is in Jesus. It is hidden in Christ. So when you know Him, the more you look at Him and perceive Jesus, you just look at Him. Sometimes you look, uh, you don't see anything, right? But you just look. Keep on looking. As one preacher likes to say, keep on keeping on. Keep on going. Alright? And then, this wisdom and knowledge will surely come, give, this, God will surely give you the wisdom and the knowledge that you need. Okay, in that sensing in your heart. Now, the second part. Okay, why am I saying all this? Because there are some people, and sometimes ourselves, we, our minds play trick with ourselves. We think, ah, hayo. There's so many things that I, I need to do, you know. And, you know, our eyes are focused on ourselves. And we are led astray or we are fooled. Okay? So I'm, I'm concerned about this. And so even though I'm not here with you, that means you cannot see me face to face. But I, my heart is for you. I'm here with you in spirit. That's what Paul's saying. Huh? And I am enjoying seeing you guys growing together, seeing TNCC grow as a church. The order, even in the unplanned, many times we don't plan but yet there is God's heavenly order. Have you experienced that? Huh? In TNCC? I've experienced that. 
because God is doing things by His order, by His schedule, by His agenda, not by what we think. And He has a proper order of things. Huh? And the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus, so walk you in Him. What is this verse saying? Okay, so now paraphrase over. Huh? You all got the first part? Okay? So now Paul goes on to say, now, all of you, all of us, how do you receive Jesus? That is the way you should continue living and growing in your walk here on this earth. Okay? So as I was doing some digging in the Bible, okay, Ephesians 1.13 came up. It says, In whom you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. This verse describes the process in which we receive Jesus. So I put up this verse so that we know if this is the way that we receive Jesus, then this is the way we should also walk, our life, walk in our lives. So I underline the, the key words there. In whom you also trusted after you heard the word of truth. Now, as we walk in our lives, you are faced with trials. You know, every single one of us here, there is something that is bothering you, right? Uh, there's something that, or not just one thing, a few things that are bothering you. And it could be the family, it could be relationships, it could be your job. And I tell you, all of us are easily bothered. Before you get promotion, uh, Yo, why am I not promoted? Uh? I work here so hard and so long. Don't they appreciate what I'm doing? Hi, yeah, you know, no, my increment uh, every year. Uh, $50, hi, yo, what kind of increment, you know, la, 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 and we are going on and on about that, okay? Then when you're promoted, nah, and then you're given triple promotion, wow, good man! After that, you get worried, yo, how ah, if I cannot perform ah, for this promotion? <laughs> ah, you start worrying, ah, yo, after, after I get fired, or after I get scolded, or you see not, before promotion also got problem, after promotion also got problem, what kind of life are we living? You see? So, and I believe that this was true also for the Colossians at that time. It's true for all of us. Huh? But Paul says, don't let anyone confuse you, trick you, fool you. Okay? So continue on. The way that you believe in Jesus, that is how you continue on in your walk. So you need to hear the word of truth. You need to hear who is truth? Jesus. Jesus is truth. So you need to hear Jesus. You need to hear about Jesus. You need to hear of Jesus. You need to hear what He has done for you. You need to always be hearing about Christ. And then, as you hear, you trust that what you hear is the truth. And then, when you trust, you know that that's the truth, then you believe. And then when you believe, then this one is when you believe, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is already with us. Okay? So, but in a specific circumstance, when you feel your sickness or you're, filled with, you're, you're, you're facing trouble, then you hear the word, what God has to say in Jesus about this trouble. After you hear, you believe His plan for you. You believe that He has taken care of it. You believe that your sickness has been healed in Jesus. You believe that all your poverty, your financial problems has been taken on by Jesus at the cross so that there was a divine exchange. He was rich. He became poor. So who becomes rich? We become rich. God doesn't say He become poor and then we still remain poor. Then who becomes rich? Right on. There's a proper exchange one, alright? So when we hear that, then you say, yes, God has made, given His provision for me. And then you're no longer looking at your problem, right? You find uh, you're no longer looking at your problem. And when your eyes are upon Jesus, 
faith arises. And God loves faith. God loves faith, you know. Because when He sees faith, means you believe in what He has said. God loves faith, right? And faith comes by hearing and hearing the word about Christ. That's what the Bible says, right? So after you have, or you know, now you know that we continue on in hearing the word about Christ, then what, is, what does Paul say? He said that after you hear this, uh, you will be rooted and you will be built up in Him. Establish in the faith as you have been taught and abounding therein with thanksgiving. In your life, the word there, rooted and built up, uh, is a passive word. So it's not saying, uh, I need to root myself. I need to build myself. The, the responsibility of building TNCC up is not on Pastor Peter's shoulders. Because this church belongs to Jesus. He is the head. He is our husband. He is the one that will grow. He is the one that will multiply. He is the one that will fill this place with life so that when people are fed and filled, then they keep coming back for more, right? Right or not? When you find a good thing, you'll be telling your friends, hey, you did very good, this one better, come, 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 come. You know? You'll be telling your friends. Bad thing, I say, oh, you know, on Facebook, when you say something bad, uh, oh, 4,000 likes. Huh? <laughs> you, you complain about one ton me seller. Oh, yo, the whole world wants to go and go after him. Right? So, when you tell people, you tell people good things, then they come. All right? So, it is God's responsibility to grow His church because it is His. It's not ours. So, don't stress. Huh? Your life, you are under His responsibility. You are under His headship. He knows what's the problem that you're facing. He will handle it. He will handle it. Right? So, He is the one that's building us up individually, one by one, in your own walk with God. And He's also building us up together as a community of love. Alright? Okay, I want you all to pay attention to the heading. Uh. I'm going to put the headings all last. So you pay attention to the heading anyway. Just So, our Father is the master builder. He is the one that is the master builder. He is the one that has got a blueprint. He is the one that is the architect that designed the whole thing. He is the one that is executing it. Alright? And he's very good at his job, let me tell you that. Okay? And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of His grace. This is Acts 20 verse 32. I commend you to God and to the word of His grace, which is able to build you up. God is doing that building up even as you hear the word about Jesus. You hear the word of grace, of what He has done for you. And that is what the Spirit is doing inside you to build you up. Alright? And like what I said just now, God is pleased with faith. Jesus said so many times, if you read, if you read in the Gospels when Jesus was here on earth, huh, when people suddenly, oh, you know, too much, the, they hear the, the report. What is the report? Don't bother the teacher anymore. Your daughter has died. Ah, yeah, no need to tell God about your problem already. Lah. You are finished. Lah. Ah, that's what you hear, right? That's what you hear. Ah, when something bad happens, Hayo. Liao, Liao, Chamo, Chamo, Seiro, Seiro. That's what Chinese like to say. Right? Mati la mati. We always say that. But what does Jesus say to that circumstance? He says, Fear not. Only believe. Is God able to bring back something from the dead? Yes or not? Do you all believe it or not? So whatever is your circumstance right now that you may have thought you think that it is finished. Maybe you started a business and it's not doing well. You know, I uh, finished all my capital. You trust in the Lord. What is He telling you? Believe in Him. He will work it out for you. Alright? Verse 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. When I read this, uh, 
wow, I feel very combative inside. I say, yeah, la, those who mix uh, grace and law, yeah, you know, these are the men leading you, wow. <laughs> you know, very combative, right? When we read passages like that, right? Yeah, yeah, we are right, you know, they are wrong, no, no. You know, all of us, inside us, that is, is that man. Because in the end, later you will see, uh, no man can sway you unless you allow them to sway you. Right on. This is like a very good salesman. Oh, they, know how to, they know how to sell the thing to you. Uh. So they will, they will push it to you, right? Then, of course, you resist. When the, when the salesman push to you, then you resist. You, 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 then you come up with all the, all the why you shouldn't buy it. They're they trying to tell you why you should buy it. Then you come out, no, 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 because expensive, lah, because all that, all that. Then what do they do? Good salesmen. Ah. They don't push some more, no. They pull. Ah, yeah, yeah, lah, I think you don't need it. Lah. I think maybe this one too good for you. Hey, wait, 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 wait. No, no, I actually, I do. <laughs> they, 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 they want to test you to see whether you'll come back. Ah, so in ourselves, there is that tug of war going on inside your head as well. Your own man, your own flesh, it's very easy for this flesh to lead who we are, the spirit man, lead us into, back into the flesh, looking at our problems again. Okay? So don't go after these things. But that's what Paul is saying. These are all empty deception. These are the ways of the world. This is the way of the flesh. We always say, you must provide for yourself. You must provide for your children. If I don't have one million dollars, huh, by the time my son is uh, 15 years old, huh, wow, his education is ruined. He's going to be out on the streets already. You know, sometimes people think like that. Nah. Do you know that? I've heard testimonies before. Don't have enough saved up for the kid. Nah. But when you look to Jesus, nah, you put all your children through school. University, overseas. Good university some more. Ah. The rest of the world say, how can he be lucky? Lah, you lucky. Ah. <laughs> lucky four times, ah, all four kids or five kids. I say, our father is the one that provides. Amen. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Just now it says, in him uh, is hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Then Paul says it one more time, uh, just in case you didn't get it. Hello, are you home? I say one more time. In him, in Jesus, and no one else. lives, dwells, is contained the fullness of God in Jesus. And all you need is Him in your life. All you need is to look to Him. Whatever your circumstance, whatever situation you're facing now, just look to Him. All of God's fullness is in Jesus. That's His will. You know, last time, I mean, somebody last time told me, you know, why you, why you always talk about Jesus? You know, hey, you must talk about God. God is the Father. You know, the Father is the boss of Jesus. Then I'm like, hmm. So when I read this passage, I'm like, hmm. What does this passage say? In Him. You want to know God? You want to know the Father? You know Jesus first. When you have seen the Son, you have seen the Father. And that's the way God purposes it. That's the way God has made it. That's the order. Alright? So don't try and shortcut. There's only one way to the Father and that's through Jesus. Amen? And you are complete in Him. He goes on to say, the fullness of God is in Him. Huh? And then Paul then says, you are complete in Him. So if anybody ever tells you, or if you yourself feel, Ayo, I'm not complete. You know, I still got so many things to do. That is being beguiled, being spoiled by empty, vain deceit. Alright? Because what are you? You are already complete in Jesus. What has He done on the cross for you? He has saved you completely. And you are completely complete in Jesus. You know, there's a, this word complete, there's a, my wife got an interesting uh, fridge magnet. It shows an orang utan there. Alright, chimpanzee. And he says, I'm not a complete idiot. Some parts are missing. Okay, those who get it, that side. 
But we are complete in Jesus. And then what is that? If you're complete in something that is not so good, uh, then no point, right? But Jesus is the head of all principality and power. He's the head of all principality and power. And power in heaven, on earth, under the earth. His work is complete. And we are in Him, you know. That gives you standing, my man. Amen? Hallelujah. In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands in putting off the body of sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Buried with Him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with Him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised Him from the dead. You have been cut off. Some people say, cut off. Uh, so, you have been cut off from your old self. Sometimes you all think, oh, yo, I'm such a... You know, last time I used to... For me, last time I used to think, I'm such a... I'm a sinner saved by grace. I'm always a sinner saved by grace. Sinner first. They only saved by grace. And it sounds so pious. It sounds so... Right, you are, you know, sinner saved by grace. You always identify yourself. Jesus said, I already saved you. So what are you now? Are you still a sinner? Why do I have to keep saving you? You are saved once and for all. I save you means you are saved, lah. Right or not? So you are already saved. You have been cut off from your old man. And what does Paul say here? You have already been circumcised, you know. Means uh, cut off. You all know what the act of circumcision means, all right? There's no such thing as circumcised and then not circumcised. Ah. Let me tell you that, lah, okay? <laughs> uh, circumcised means circumcised, ah, okay? So, Paul is saying you already circumcised, the flesh has been cut off, then you have been buried with Him. Dead and buried, gone. Then, the new man that God raised up, that is you now, is a new creation you are complete in Him. So again, paraphrase. And you being dead in your sins and uncircumcision of your flesh, okay? Even though you, you are all... You, no, you, are, you, you now, uh, based on what I said, all of us now here are already cut off from our flesh. He has raised us up together with Jesus and, past tense, forgiven all your sins. Gautim already. No need to worry about your past sins, present sins, future sins. Don't worry about your sins. Just focus on Jesus. Okay? He took the law and nailed it to the cross. The, 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 the ordinances are to say that the debt has been paid. That's why he's saying the debt has been paid. The law has been fully fulfilled. The law has no more stake over you. Cannot accuse you anymore. It has been nailed, past tense, to the cross. By God Himself. Alright? So fulfilled. And after, so He has taken it away already. It says here, taken it away and then He spoiled. He carried off as booty. He destroyed all the principalities and powers that were in place against us. And now Jesus is the head of all principality and power. Okay? He was, Jesus was always the head. But God allowed that time, the rule over us uh, of the law. But Jesus has now taken that place. And He triumphed over it. God got rid of the problem D. Uh, he has gotten rid of the problem. Let, so now that He has gotten rid of the problem, God has solved the issue, the demands of the law upon us. Gotten rid of it, uh. Why la? Why? You want to say, I must do this in order for God to hear my prayers. I must do this in order for God to bring about a change in my life. I must do this in order to please Him. Then you're going back to the old way again. So this is what Paul is saying. Why? Do you want to go back? That time, of course, there are all these people telling them that you must still observe the law, you know, even though you're a Christian, no, 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 you must still observe the law, must do this, do that. Then they were put under burden again, put a, a yoke of slavery upon them again. And Paul is saying this is no, all no longer applicable, all right? No longer applicable. You do, all these things that you do, you are doing it not because you have to please God, all right? 
you're doing it only when the Spirit tells you to. And doing it out of love for one another. That's why Paul says, if your brother is stumbled if you drink wine, then don't drink wine lah, because you stumble him, not because you need to please God. It's for his sake. We do it out of love. Okay? And then Paul says, uh, which are a shadow. All these things that, you, that we know last time, the wave offering, the heave offering, the drink offering, the burn offering, you know, all the, the different days that were observed are all a shadow of things to come. But the body is of Christ. When I, when I read this, the body of, is of Christ, uh, I thought body means the body, the church. But actually this body means, uh, when I read, read, when I went to go and look at the Greek, it's the same word as soma, is the word soma. But actually at the, at the end, uh, one of the explanations is the body that casts the shadow. A body casts a shadow. Uh, you can see a shadow. The body is the substance. The substance is the one that casts the shadow. The law and all the things that, were, that came before Jesus were the shadow. Jesus is the real thing. Jesus is the substance of it. So, when you read the, the Old Testament, please, you need to understand that all the Jewish laws and ceremonial laws and all these things that were there were a testimony. God is putting the secret in there just to hint to you that somebody greater is coming. These are all the shadow that's pointing to the person. And now the person has come already, Jesus. So you don't have to go and observe all those things anymore. Because now you have the substance. Right or not? Amen? So don't confuse the substance with the shadow. Don't get confused. So if somebody tells you, Oh, you cannot see doctor, ah? Huh? If you see doctor, means you don't have faith in God. Or, oh, you must fast, ah? Huh? 40 days, 50 days. If not, God won't hear your prayer. More people must come together to pray, only God will hear. All these kind of things, requirements are requirements made by man, placed upon you, man's ideas. What is the Holy Spirit telling you? If the Holy Spirit tells you, fast, then you fast. If the Holy Spirit tells you, pray 40 days, pray for 40 days. We are being led of the Spirit now, okay? Because He's in us. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshipping of angels, intruding into those things which he hath not seen and puffed up by his fleshly mind. So, again, this one pointing, don't, I don't like to go and point to other people, sometimes ourselves. It says, let no man. Means you have to let them, you know. You need to let that thought come in, only you, you believe it, right? Not? So you need to, first of all, you need to think, hey, what does the Bible say? What what did Jesus do? Am I, you know, you go and do your own research. You ask the Holy Spirit. Because a lot of times, when, when we are facing problems, we are facing issues, then, you know, all these things are going through your mind, right? In the morning when you wake up, you know, brushing your teeth, you're thinking about the problem, right? So, this is actually the flesh. Because the flesh is looking at the problem, trying to look at it from this side, look at it from this side, on top, down there. Try and figure it out, right? That's how we uh, try and look at different angles. But the wisdom to solve that problem comes when you're not looking at the problem. When you're looking at Jesus. That's when the wisdom comes. The Lord will speak to you. So when you take your mind off Him, uh, off not, uh, that means off the problem, when you take your mind off the problem and focus on Jesus, let me tell you, there will be change. Because when you're looking to Jesus, uh, only faith, there's only faith there. Because you're believing that He will do it for you. Amen? So even for me now, you know, I'm at work and you know, all that, there are, there are different things, you know, that, 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 that I'm going through. And, you know, you, you, I don't know what's going to happen in the future. So we have arranged this thing nicely already, you know, and then suddenly some problem come out here and then something else and then people change their mind and then ding dong, ding dong, you know. Then, hiyo, after a while, uh, then, I'm, then I realised last night actually, because I had a meeting yesterday and then I was thinking about it, you know, business meeting and then there was some, I mean, thinking, why, yo, why like that, you know, why is it? Then I come back and then I'm preparing the message. Uh, then the, the Lord told me, your eyes are still on the problem. Huh? Your eyes are still on the problem. I just took up cycling. 
Okay, so I'm a novice cycler, cyclist. My backside very pain now. <laughs> when you do 30 over km on the bicycle, wow, very pain. Okay, uh, those who are cyclists here know. Uh. And we were talking, talking that day about mountain biking and they are saying, you know, when you go down the hill, uh, where you look is where you're going to go. So if you're looking at the longkang coming, uh, oh, you're scared of the longkang, so you want to be careful, you don't want to go into the longkang. But when you're looking at the longkang, that's where you're going to go. Uh. Straight into the longkang. So uh, a brother was saying, you know, you, you need to look at where you want to go. So longkang is there, but you look at where you want to go. You look, 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 you know, then somehow uh, you end up there. When you drive car on the track, last time, uh, last time I used to take my, my, my sports car to the track, and you are doing very, very high speeds and you're taking corners, the, the G-force and all this is very, I mean, it's stressful, but it's exciting at the same time. You need to look where you're going. If you look at the corner, oh, corner, corner, <laughs> you're going to go into the gravel. So the same thing. When our mind is focused on the problem, the problem gets bigger. The more you think, the more you think, the more you flip the pancake this way, that way, this way, that way. Ah. Ayo. It's more and more stress. Just get more and more burnt, the pancake. All right? You look to Jesus. Okay? And then Paul says, ah, when you are looking at the problem, you're not holding on to the head. Jesus. You need to hold on to Jesus. Look to Him. Why? Because from there comes all your nourishment for your needs. You need this? Where's the supply coming from? From Jesus. And the increase that you will experience is the increase of God. It's not the increase of men. Men, uh, now I'm in the finance line, right? When you tell people 10% a year, uh, whoa, quite good, right? Huh? FD give you how much? 3% of year. This one, 10% a year, oh, quite good, eh? Quite good. In, in the finance line, people would risk capital when they, are, they evaluate risk uh, and they see a 30% return. Ah, they would take out a lot of money and bet, lah. Because the return is quite high, but the risk is very high also. So 30% is very good return. Those who are in business, 30% good or not? A year. Oh, fantastic, man. But that's the increase of man. The increase of God is beyond what you can ever imagine. It's out of this world. He increases. As I was looking at pastor's life, you know, I was just amazed. I mean, just looking at the picture, some people, when you see that, you say, you, I wish I can have a life like that. La. You know, my life, ah, yo, my life. You know that. Where are you looking again? You're looking at yourself. The problem. Right. I don't know. I, I mean, honestly, maybe some of you have the feeling that some people, you know, you know, we, we, we like to compare one another, one, right? But as I look at that testimony, and I'm a great, grateful recipient of God's blessing on my father-in-law's life. You know, I have to say that. But I realise the grace of God in his life. Grace upon grace upon grace upon favour upon favour. You know, he has gone through difficult times, but it is because of his saviour, his head, that has blessed him. And all of us here are just as blessed. There's no difference because we are all children of God and God shows no favouritism. He's not saying, oh, Peter Z is my favourite son. The rest of them, no. You know? No. It's because we are... Okay, let me tell you who is his favourite son. Jesus. He's his favourite son. And we are all in Jesus. So we are all his favourites. Amen or not? We are all his favourites. So you need to rest in Jesus. Amen? And then you will see the increase of God in your life. The increase that will blow your mind, baby. Amen? And it's not, and it, it will come in His timing. It will come according to His schedule. You just rest. You don't go and cover the blessing only. La. You must look to the head who is the source of all the blessing, okay? So, Paul is saying, if you have, you are already dead uh, from the rudiments of the world, the way of the flesh. Why? Mengapa? <laughs> 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 
Why are you still, you know, looking down at the problem? Going back to, oh, I better pray harder, then only God will answer me. You know what I mean? Huh? Anyway, I don't want to focus on that, okay? Now as I'm speaking to you, I tell you that Jesus is ahead. So it is not by physical or outward shows that you get that increase of God. It is by holding on to Jesus. Alright? And so, to summarize, if you have been paying attention to the headings, I'm just stringing the headings together. Our Father is the Master Builder. All His fullness and supply is in Jesus. We are complete in Him. We have been cut off from our flesh and our old man. God has gotten rid of the problem. So don't confuse substance with a shadow. From Jesus comes our reward and increase, not by physical and outward shows. Amen? And this is what God is saying to all of us in Colossians 2. God is saying, I have provided for all your needs according to my riches, not according to your need. Nah. My riches is much more than your need. I provided for all your needs through my Son, Jesus Christ. He is the answer. So you just look to Jesus. Say, Jesus, I thank you that you have solved my problem already. You know, whatever is the issue in your life right now, just look to Him. Can we rise? I want to speak now to all those who know Jesus as your Lord and Saviour. Okay? Later, I will address those who do not know Jesus yet, have not accepted Jesus into your life. All of us here who are children of God, can you raise your hand? Give a wave. It's great to be a son of God. His favour is upon you because Jesus took the condemnation, Jesus took the, the suffering, He took the judgement, the cup of the wrath of God upon Himself at the cross. And He did a divine exchange. We have been credited with that. And we receive that even as we hold on to the head, which is Christ Jesus our Lord. And we will all grow together You know, whatever you have that, that is the problem, I don't want you to look at the problem. Okay? I know it's in the back of your mind. Just look to your Saviour. From Him flows all your supply. From Him flows all the answers to the questions that you don't have an answer to. There may be things that have happened in your life, you know, and you're asking God, why? Don't ask God why. Just rest in Him. Later on, He will show you why. You know, sometimes we go around in circles, right? And then we ask God, how come you're leading me around in a circle? You know, it seems like I went through this and then now I'm going through this again. You know, I got, I, the Lord just spoke to me. He said that because I haven't shown you everything yet, I'm taking you one more round so that I can show you one more aspect of how much I love you. So that I can show you one more area of your life that I can bless you in. He's taking you one more round. But don't worry, He is a good tour guide. Uh, he will always lead you to where you're going. That's where you will be. As long as you just walk with Him side by side, holding His hand, don't need to worry about what the future holds because the future will be good for you because He is with you. You just follow Him. Amen. Father, I just thank You for all Your children here. And whatever it is, all the, 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 the worries and all that cumulatively in this room, I banish You in the name of Jesus. And we all look to the source of our increase. That is Christ Jesus. Father, we thank You that you have given us your all in your Son. And I thank you that we receive all of this right now. 
and every day of our life that your spirit reminds us to, to look to you instead of to the problem. And even as we look to you, we magnify you. And as we look to you, we see how much you have provided. And then all these things will sort itself out. All your needs, all our needs will be met. And even our wants. Just rest in Him. Hallelujah, child of God. And for those of us here who have not received Jesus, and you hear me saying these things, and you say, you know, Yusuf, that sounds like what I want. You know, that sounds like what I've been looking for all my life. Wherever you are now, you can become a child of God. All you need to do, like what the verse just now said in Ephesians, that you trusted in what you have heard and then you believe in Jesus and then you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Repeat after me. If you want to believe in Jesus, repeat this prayer after me. Dear God, I thank you that you gave your son Jesus. I did not know him in the past, but now I know him. I want to know him more. I accept Jesus as my saviour. I accept this gift that you have given to me. Not of my own work, only as I believe. And I thank you that I'm born again into your family. And I am now your son. And I can experience all your goodness in my life. Even as I continue in my journey with you. In Jesus' name, we pray.